everybody. Um, our next speaker is James O'Burney. He is a developer at Chain Code Labs. Uh, he's also our first speaker of the day to be remote. So this is a new uh, and uh, this is a new experience for all of us, so looking forward to it. Hi guys, am I on? Yeah. Great, everybody can hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so hey guys, I wish I could be with you today. Uh, unfortunately, I have a reputation as a scaredy cat from bear to uphold, so um, I'm uh, broadcasting from Ohio right now. Um, today we're gonna talk a little bit about a project I've been working on for the past year assume UTXO, but um, less about the specifics of assume UTXO and more about the general process because I think there's a little bit of interest in um, how contributions to core, especially in terms of um, implementation features actually work. So um, so first, I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am in case you're not familiar. Um, second, we'll give you the basics of assume UTXO and how that works. And then um, the bulk of the presentation is gonna be spent talking about how it was actually implemented, um, how we went out and sought feedback for it, and um, uh, how we're actually getting the, the code into core. Um, hopefully at the end of this thing, you'll have some better understanding of um, how it should work their way into core, and I guess it should go without saying that this is just one way this can happen. This is uh, sort of the way that, that I, I happen to structure it, but um, there are obviously a few different ways uh, features get developed. So this is just the, the approach I took. So my name is James O'Byrne. Um, I studied computer science and math in uh, college. Then I spent a little bit of time at NIST um, working on an open source partial differential equation solver called FiPi. After that, I went to go work for some fairly boring startups um, and then worked a little bit in biotech and electronics manufacturing. And um, through a lot of that time, I was fairly interested in Bitcoin. Um, starting in about 2011, finally in 2015, um, I uh, uh, wrote a feature called Chain State Obfuscation that uh, worked its way into Bitcoin Core. Um, and then in 2018, I happily went to go work for Chaincode. Um, so when I got to Chaincode, I had to figure out what I wanted to work on full time. Um, and what I had come in knowing is that initial block download, um, or the, the process of initially provisioning a node is be onerous um, from a time standpoint and it, it it I think discourages a lot of marginal users from um, opting into the kind of best case security model of Bitcoin which is um, fully validating the blockchain and um, you know in, enforcing the uh, consensus rules explicitly that you opt into when you're transacting uh, so I spent some time trying to figure out how this could be improved and um, during a core dev meeting, I think it was in December, I'm sorry, no, early 2019, I heard Alex Morcos mention this idea of UTXO snapshots. And um, the idea, in a nutshell, I'll go more into details, but uh, the idea is basically that we have a crystallized version of the UTXO set at some block height, and you would have a cryptographic commitment to this snapshot somewhere in the, in the source code and you would basically allow the user to bootstrap a node very quickly based on this snapshot per the cryptographic commitment that's, that's in the source. So that sounded sort of intuitively um, uh, workable to me, at least um, you know, from an implementation standpoint, I wasn't sure about the finer points of security, um, but I figured it was worth a shot because a lot of the sort of more uh, marginal measures I tried for, for uh, performance improvement weren't really going anywhere. It's like, okay, so you get 10 to 15% improvement, you know, what is that, what, what difference does that really make? Whereas something like this, you know, it has a sort of order of magnitude um, improvement on the, the, the time to do IBD. Um, so the first point here is, is that I can't emphasize enough that um, in-person interaction is, is really, really helpful. Um, and uh, specifically being able to, you know, devote a ton of time to building up context on how Bitcoin Core works and uh, where, the, where the real bottlenecks are and, and um, where the avenues for improvement are and, and basically being able to interact in very low, um, low latency with people who really know what they're doing and have a lot of familiarity. Um, so my advice here is um, if there's any way you can 
if, if you really want to work on this stuff and, and if there's any avenue that will allow you to do it full time, um, seek that out. And especially if it's if it's a sort of in-person environment, because I think that just really um, is, is much higher bandwidth um, than sitting in IRC. But we take what we can get. Um, so assume ETXO itself uh, basically um, is a way of taking a serialized ETXO set um, obtained by uh, the node that's, that's starting up. Somehow we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, uh, but basically then the, the peer, it's a, a headers chain. Um, it ensures that the snapshot appears, um, that the, the header reference in the snapshot appears in the, the uh, best headers chain it, it obtains. Um, loads the snapshot, uh, fakes all the, the chain state data structures necessary for Bitcoin to operate. Um, and it verifies that the hash of the UTXO set that it unpacked from the snapshot matches a hard-coded assume UTXO value. And um, this is really where the analog to assume valid comes in. Um, from there, we sync to TIP, which is typically, you know, maybe the last 5 to 10 percent of the uh, chain. Um, and then importantly, we start background verification um, using a second chain state data structure. So basically, that's when we're doing the kind of traditional legacy IBD to make sure that um, the blockchain that we build up um, using that method uh, connects up with the snapshot um, that we have unpacked. So once that happens, we compare the hashes of the UTXO set that the legacy process built to the UTXO set that we unpacked, and we make sure that they uh, uh, are, are equal. Um, so there are really two phases to this, and um, I've only started working on the first phase. Um, which is to allow snapshot use via the RPC framework um, and basically to, to have people explicitly opt into it with um, a snapshot that they've somehow obtained, you know, whether that's through BitTorrent or a CDN or something, that we're not hard coding a distribution mechanism into Bitcoin. Um, and then the second phase would be to actually build kind of distribution into the peer to peer layer, or maybe some, you know, um, Reed Solomon coded chunks or something along those lines. Um, but that's really only going to come after we get this initial phase done to, to sort of prove the concept, make sure it's, you know, it's uh, really solid. Um, so in order to actually get phase one done, um, there's a lot of refactoring that has to happen. Basically, we have to shuffle around a lot of data structures because now, you know, we have two chain states running around. We have, you know, two UTXO sets and um, uh, two blockchains. Um, we have to write in the snapshot creation and activation logic. There are some minor networking changes that have to happen. We have to be a little bit more um, diligent with doling out caching. And um, we have to take the existing UTXO set cache and basically split it in, in uh, various ways at various times. And of course, there's an RPC layer to be built. Um, but for all this, um, we get basically um, the upshot of an IBD within about an hour um, based on the testing that I've done. Um, now, of course, that, that depends on um, how, how fresh the snapshot that you have is, your bandwidth, your CPU, your DB cache, all, all those things. But, but um, you know, instead of basically having to wait to verify the entire chain for an operable node, um, you, can get, uh, you can get pretty much the same thing within um, only having to validate uh, the last five percent of the chain, so it's it's a, it's a pretty big speed up. Um, obviously, there there are some questions you might have about the security model there, um, which are great questions, but um, I I don't really have time to go into that. More than saying that it's it's basically analogous to assume valid, it's sort of an, a spiritual successor to that. Um, so I have a document I can link to later if you want to go pick that over and um, give me guff about it. Uh, this is just a, a, a small, somewhat outdated architectural diagram of the changes that need to happen to at least the validation module in Bitcoin Core. I won't go into this, but suffice to say that um, it's, it's, it's a lot of refactoring, and um, uh, many of the core developers out there can probably tell you that refactoring is like one of, the, one of our least favorite things in Bitcoin because it's just um, uh, a hotbed of a bike shed of ism. And uh, it's, it's a really easy way to basically spend three months um, debating somebody on GitHub about the merits of uh, object composition or something. Um, so um, it's been interesting navigating, um, uh, getting all that stuff uh, in and, and uh, 
getting some friends surrounded. So the, the first steps that I took here were basically to spend a month or so working on a prototype. And um, I, I think this is basically the found, this should be the foundation of any, any work that you want to go and do on Bitcoin is, is you have to convince yourself that you think it can work because oftentimes you might have an idea and um, it might sound like a really good idea, but then when you go to implement it, um, there are all these tricky corner cases or, or reasons why it may not be such a good idea. So um, I got the prototype working, which was uh, a lot. Of, and then I came up with the demo, which I presented internally at Chaincode, just to get some feedback to make sure there weren't any sort of glaring problems. Um, the code that I produced was totally unmergeable. Um, there were probably way too many changes. Um, there were about 45 whip commits, um, so totally not semantic, um, but that's fine at this stage of the game because you don't really know if it's a viable idea. Um, so just get something working and get out to a, to a few people who can take a look and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense or that's uh, total garbage. Um, from that point, I opened up this sort of draft PR, um, which basically had all my changes. Um, and uh, this allowed me to get some really high level feedback to just sort of raise a little bit of awareness that um, this thing was in progress. Uh, and, um, and so out of that, um, uh, I, I got a few good pieces of feedback and I got some indication that there was appetite for this change. Um, so that was the fir first public artifact I'd created. Um, and shortly thereafter, I, I spent time breaking up the commits into nice semantic chunks, um, which was honestly probably the most work of anything uh, so far. Like, um, I can't tell you how many times I rebased, but it was a lot. Um, and so shortly after that, um, I wrote uh, a quick mail to the mailing list, um, which, uh, which was really just to try and get some more awareness um, around this thing, hopefully get some more eyes on it. Uh, there were a few good comments made. There wasn't a, a particularly lengthy discussion, um, though uh, some people had raised some, some concerns. And uh, I felt that not only did those concerns need to be addressed, but that doing it on a mailing list might, um, might be uh, kind of uh, high latency. Um, so I started to put together this, this documentation in GitHub. And in hindsight, I guess you could argue that this probably should have just been but um, at the time, I kind of thought to myself, okay, well, this is implementation specific to Bitcoin Core, and I, I don't necessarily want to deal with all the overhead of uh, doing a BIP. Um, so I just created this, this, this repository and um, typed up sort of an FAQ, um, an overview of the proposal, and then um, basically would merge feedback from various people as, as it came in um, as a kind of historical artifact. So that, that worked out pretty well. Maybe it should have been a bit, but I'm not sure. Um, finally, after uh, the change hung out long enough, the idea was kind of in the air, um, and it seemed like um, uh, there, was, there was some pretty solid consensus behind it. Um, it was time to start kind of carving off parts of that big experimental PR into um, many more small, kind of tightly scoped PRs. And the advantage of doing this is um, that along the way, you get to really scrutinize the code and make sure that each part of this thing is actually essential. Um, because basically, the name of the game when contributing to core is, is mitigating the changes. Um, because that's just less that can go wrong. It's less that people have to scrutinize and review. And review is by far the bottleneck. So basically, the smaller you can make the changes, um, the better. And um, the other nice thing about this is that uh, along the way, you can, you can add some pretty fine-grained unit tests, um, and uh, everybody likes those. Um, so this is kind of the structure of, of each of the, uh, the Assume ETX are related PRs so far. I've got this context header thing where I, I, I link to the, uh, the experimental PR and some documentation around Assume ETXO. I have a little section where I explain exactly what the change is, and um, importantly, I have another section that, that explains the motivation or why this is necessary um, for the feature. And I think this is really important because um, you have to be very clear about the motivations for uh, a given pull request, or, uh, or else you risk um, not having anybody pay attention to it, um, 
because there's a whole lot of activity on the repo and there's a whole lot of important work going on and there's kind of a scarcity of reviewers. So you have to be very clear about what you're doing and why. Um, another little tip is um, the more kind of friendly you can make your changes, the more likely you are to get review. So there's um, something called the scripted diff, which is basically if you're doing a, a lot of refactoring um, for uh, a lot of changes that that can be done kind of systematically with something like awk um, said, uh, what you can do is make those changes and then include this verify script um, in your scripted diff commit. And that gets run automatically by the CI system to verify that uh, the changes that you've made are indeed the result of the uh, script that you attach. And this just makes it easier for reviewers to, to churn through some of the more mechanical changes um, without uh, having to do too much work. So um, the first few PRs for this thing have been merged so far. They've all been, really been um, refactoring PRs that are just shuffling data structures around um, and uh, getting ready for um, the, the sort of asynchronous op op uh, operation of um, multiple chain states. Um, I'd say here, you know, it's sort of a war of attrition. You just gotta be patient. Um, when all when all the work is done, you know, um, really eighty percent of the work is staying on top of PRs, um, rebasing, um, hounding people for review, um, and I think the key there really is just um, emphasizing why this is a worthwhile project. Um, and um, happily, I think a lot of people working on Bitcoin Core have a pretty keen sense of um, priority, and so. You know, if you if you make a good case as to why your change is important, then um, you'll get review. Uh, the other thing I think is important is showing um, reproducible benchmarks. Um, obviously, if you're if you're working on some kind of performance improvement, it's important to make a fairly rigorous case for um, why your change is actually uh, improving things. And um, it's even better if uh, you can make it uh, easily run by other people so they can verify what you've done. Um, so I think that's that's important too. Um, so at the moment, um, nine PRs have been merged for some UTX, so I've got uh, two outstanding. I think one um, is in need of a rebase at the moment, so that's on me. Um, qualitatively, I, I think we're about halfway to um, allowing snapshots to be activated through the RPC. Um, and um, I, I think that'll be really great when we finally get that in. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, it'll be done by uh, end of the year. Um, so the other thing you can look at is um, a, a project that we've kind of been experimenting with. Uh, Fanfic has done a, a really nice job of helping me um, uh, keep these PRs organized. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a nice overview to see, see where things are at. Um, kind of in summary, uh, when you're working on changes for Bitcoin, um, I, I think personally, at least for me, it's it's really hard to see this process happening without um, some good in-person interaction. Um, so I'm really thankful to have been able to spend some time in chain code um, because I think otherwise it's it would have been really hard to kind of develop and implement uh, this feature. Um, get something working on your own first to kind of a prototype to make sure that things, you know, your, your, your feature change is actually going to work in the way that you think it will. Um, and then once you come up with something, um, propose small changes because that, that just makes it easier for people to uh, scrutinize, to kind of come along for the ride, um, and uh, to make sure that each, each thing that you're submitting is actually essential. Um, it makes review a little bit easier, um, and you can make review even, even easier by providing things like concrete testing steps, using uh, script diffs, um, and um, you know, keeping the motivation up. Why is why is this an important change? Um, what is this actually going to do? Um, and of course, uh, be patient. Uh, not a lot of spare bandwidth in terms of reviewers on Bitcoin. And and as Andrew did such a good job of articulating, it's you know a, a pretty sensitive system. So um, this this stuff should take a while. Um, and uh, present benchmarks. So that's about all I've got. Hopefully um, some of you will have questions and hopefully I've left enough time for those questions. Um, if you're kind of curious more about the innards of Assume UTXO, I did a talk a few months ago that was reported that you can check out. 
you can also go and uh, see the docs um, at that GitHub repo. So thank you very much. Thank you, James. Uh, we have time for a question or two. And in the meantime, if the panelists for the Bitcoin Core Dev panel could come forward. Question? No worries. Thank you, James. Very insightful Thanks. on the Bitcoin Core PR process. And uh, oh, we have one question actually coming up. So, so you're saying you can synchronize from a from a UTXO set. Is there a standard file format for UTXOs? I wouldn't say there's a standard file format. Basically, um, I've created one, and that's been merged. Um, so you can check that out. It's it's basically just a, a serialized object. We um, essentially serialize out the raw bytes of the uh, coins, and then include a little bit of metadata on top. So, is there like a canonical canonical order for them, or? Um, yeah, that's per level DB's storage format. So I think it's ordered by a point. Thank you. Great, thank you, James.